Hello guys, Croft is here. Today we're gonna talk about Alien Covenant prologue script that actually reveals how Elizabeth Shaw died or more specifically how David killed her, which are crucial details left unexplained in Alien Covenant. The prologue script was not included in the main Alien Covenant script because it's a part of the special material, so it took me a while to find it. After watching Alien Covenant, many of us had questions like why Shaw assembled David despite the fact that he tried to kill her in Prometheus. Why did she trust him? What happened between David and Shaw which led to her death? And the script also touches on why David killed the engineer-like beings on the planet 4. The main script doesn't answer any of these questions, but luckily the prologue script absolutely does and it makes sense because Shaw's death happened in the prologue, not in the film. Make sure to subscribe guys if you haven't already and click the notification bell to not miss any of my videos. I'll be posting more alien videos in the next month and on top of that I'll be posting Marvel theories and updates on my other channel. So if you guys want to see my Marvel content, click the link under the video and subscribe to my new Marvel channel. I'll also leave a link in the description to the prologue script, which was posted on AVP Galaxy, a really credible source for alien and predator content. The prologue that we've seen on the screen is actually a short version of what's in the script. First of all, Shaw brought David in the Juggernaut because he knew how to control the ship and set the destination course to the engineer homeworld. At the beginning of the script, Shaw records a transmission explaining what happened to her and where she's going. Our mission was to discover the origin of human life. We believed our species have been crafted by an alien race, we called them the engineers. We found what we believed was proof of their existence, a map to their home. We thought they wanted us to come find them. We were wrong. The map only led to an outpost full of biological weapons, weapons our creators had intended for us. Three days after we made first contact, the Prometheus was destroyed, all hands were lost. The mission's android, David, was damaged, but with his help I was able to activate one of their ships and escape. We set a new course for their homeworld. Two months into our journey, David became unstable. I found him trying to reassemble himself, I believed I was in danger. I've been alone ever since. So, about two months after the departure from LV-223, Shaw still doesn't trust David and doesn't want to repair him, which is what we would expect since David tried to kill her in Prometheus. But then things start to become a bit more interesting when David's consciousness is about to permanently disappear. Dr. Shaw, I don't want to talk to you anymore, David. I appreciate that, I just wanted to say goodbye, I don't have much time, without my power systems connected, my consciousness will soon fail. But I understand something new today, perhaps we're not so different, you and I. Shaw, we're nothing like each other. David, I'm frightened too. Shaw stops short, hesitating, listening. David's confession hits her deep, maybe it's her isolation, but Shaw is suddenly fighting back tears. David, I thought you could talk to me for a little while about anything that pleases you, really. I just wanted to hear a voice as I die and if you could pretend to be kind to me. A long, snaking, tendril-like cable extends from the ship, reaching out, tethering to David's broken body, attaching. Then the script jumps to the scene that we saw in the prologue, Shaw repairing David. The script explains that Shaw was feeling very isolated after spending months alone in the ship, which is why she saved David, the closest resemblance of human interaction that she could get. In other words, David manipulated her emotions in order to stay alive, as he said himself, he's able to understand human emotions, but not to feel them. If you read the full prologue script, you realize that writers emphasize the aspect of isolation that Shaw goes through. Traumatic and shocking events in Prometheus and extreme solitude after that would be a good reason for Shaw to keep David alive. The script also mentions that once Shaw reconnected the main wires, David was able to reattach the rest and repair himself. 
Months pass as they grow closer, inevitably, Shaw is wary at first, but that gradually fades. The script then explains that David taught Elizabeth engineer maps and navigation and that they grew very comfortable together to the point that Shaw did not fear David at all. This part is also briefly shown in the prologue when, with a smile on his face, David draws Elizabeth and Shaw is smiling back. Close to the end of the script, they arrive to the Engineer Planet, which is now considered, at least in my opinion, to be another Engineer Colony, not their actual homeworld. The entire floor and front bulkhead shimmer and become transparent, and we see the Engineer Homeworld. The sight is overwhelming, a hyper-civilization in its flower, Rome just before the fall. The planet is a close cousin to Earth, swathed in clouds, oceans, and odd metallic blue. But the entire planet is encircled with a huge constructed ring, and the space around the ring is thick with avoid engineer craft, orders of magnitude larger than David and Shaw's Stalin Dreadnought. The interesting detail in this part of the script is that the planet is encircled with an engineer-made giant ring, which is definitely not what we've seen in Alien Covenant. However, it's possible that the ring was destroyed as a result of David's bombing, which is what happens later in the script. There are tears in Shaw's eyes, like a glimpse into heaven for her. David, is that what you imagined? Shaw in tears, so much more, so much more. David, it's good to see you cry. She glances at him, what? Then suddenly, he reaches up and brutally snaps her neck. She falls, dead. He looms over her. All the clever simulations of humanness fade from his features. He has no need of them now. He can just be himself. That was a pretty shocking moment in the script, particularly bad for Shaw, because she trusted David again and paid for that with her life. It would be better if her death was at least shown on the screen, since she was a great and interesting character that fans cared about. All that time that David was with her in the ship, he was just playing human in order to manipulate Elizabeth, and now he can openly pursue his dark and evil plans, which consist of destroying the engineer planet and creating xenomorph eggs using Shaw's dead body. For some reason, David wanted to keep her alive until they reach the engineer planet and not just kill her right after she repairs him. Maybe David wanted her to see the planet of the beings that created her so that she can witness her makers before she dies. Another interesting detail is that right after killing Shaw, David mentions his prior dialogue with her, which reveals possibly the main reason why he killed the engineers. He looms over Elizabeth and says, to what do you aspire is the correct grammar by the way, which is a reference to this dialogue they had previously. Shaw, when we get there, the closer we get, the more I wonder if we are really supposed to meet our makers, our gods. David, I met my creator, Mr. Wayland. I met him and I served him, but in the end, he was unworthy of my service. You resent that, and then David responds, how can I? I was made for service. He looks at her, a hint of something darkly challenging in his eyes. But one does brittle, Elizabeth, one does aspire. And what do you aspire to, David? The dialogue ends there, so David doesn't answer the question until after he kills Shaw and then responds, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven which is immediately followed by him releasing the black urns with xenovirus, killing the engineers. This passage explains the main reason David decided to destroy the engineer planet, which is related to his superiority complex. As mentioned in the script, he was very angry about the fact that he had to serve Mr. Wayland and humans despite having superior intelligence and strength. Although androids aren't supposed to feel emotions, due to malfunction, David was building up hate towards humans, and after Wayland's death, he was able to unleash it. Over the years, David cultivated the idea in his mind that he is superior to humans and other beings. 
Then in the prologue, David proves to himself that he is superior to humans by successfully manipulating Shah's emotions and killing her. Then he tries to prove his superiority again by destroying a planet that he believes is the engineer homeworld. Another reason David killed all the engineers is because he simply needed a planet to express his creative genius and he did not care at all about planet inhabitants. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something interesting from the script. Many of you asked me in the comments to post Marvel videos, so I created a new channel on which I'll post Marvel content. So if you want me to post Marvel videos, go to the channel in the description and subscribe. This way I'll know how many of you guys are interested in seeing Marvel content. Also, leave your thoughts about Shaw's death in the comments, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel, I'll be posting more alien content in the future. My name is Croft and I'll see you in the next video.